That's me. I'm holding up my BT meter. It's model 570 CAPP. We're going to talk about good things that work with this meter, but we're also going to talk about user interface annoyances and frustrations. And I want to mention the bad things that don't work as expected. Two bad things that might be unique to me, and is my meter defective? Let's just start with something really simple, a resistant measurement, but I'm going to talk about this data hold button. Now, a data hold button does exactly what you would think it does. You push the thing down, and it holds the reading on the LCD screen for you. But also, it's a combo button. So if you press it down and hold it for more than two seconds, the backlight will light. I really like the backlight, and so I wanted to use it with filming. The problem is it doesn't work as it says here the thing. You, you have to mess with the button and really press it twice. So watch this. I'm going to try and measure. Uh, I have a two-pack resistor here. It's 30,000 ohms. So I hook it up and I measure it. And as you can see on this thing, it does measure 30,000. Okay, works great. But I'm kind of thinking to myself, okay, you know, the meter was at an angle, so let's tilt it towards the camera, and I'll just film it again. So I, then I remember the backlight, so I push the button for two seconds. The thing comes on, right? And I'm happy. Now see what's happening? I'm, I'm measuring it, I'm measuring it, I'm, I'm kind of stumbling. I got the pressure, the camera's on, I'm filming, and it doesn't work. And I remember, oh, yeah, you got to push the button again because the data hold is on. Now, and it measures 30,000. That's that's real simple thing, You, not a big deal. But let's talk about the rel button. That's number six on the list of items on the front of this meter that you need. And it tells you what the rel button is. Now, I've never heard of a rel button before. It's something new to me. It says it's relative measuring mode. And basically, what it's telling you is that if you push the rel button, let's say you hook it up to a 12-volt battery, you push the rel button in, it goes to zero. And now, when you start the engine on your car, you put the battery charger on, let's say it goes up 3 volts. Well, Technically, now you know, okay, it's 15 volts. I'm, I'm actually measuring 15 volts, but I'm seeing the difference between the before and after. When I saw this and read this thing, I knew I would never, ever use the rail button. It would never come into play. I would never want that. What I want to do is just hook up the meter and see what it is. And if I start the car, it goes up, it goes up. If I turn something off or on, it goes up. So I discounted the rail button mentally in my mind. I said, it, it doesn't apply to anything I'm doing. I would never, you know, need to be clicking it on or off. You know, and when you click it on, it stays on, and when you click it off, it stays off. It's not like a temporary push button thing. So that now is going to bring us up to the next thing. Here is what happens when you're uh, going to measure DC current. And this is on the opposite side of the instruction sheet. So I glanced at this, and I assumed I knew how to measure DC current. You know, you open up the jaws, you put it around the wire, and it read the meter. But if you notice here, number two, it says, press the rel. This display shows zero. And so, for me, I, you know, I glossed over that. I pressed a rel. You know, I, I'm thinking they're talking about if you want to have something in memory, and then you want to measure the additional increase in amperage or something, something to do with that. I mean, it's... All right. But they do mention that the jaw core may retain some magnetic force after using it. They say A here is change the direction of the measured DC current, and then B, open the jaws several times. Now, see, this was not explained properly because I read the reviews on Amazon. And a lot of people on Amazon say, well, it's not even close to accurate on lower things like a couple amps. I mean, it's, it's just way off. It's not working right. They are not using the rail thing correctly. And the meter is polarity sensitive. It depends on which way you put it on the wire. If you put it on with the wire coming, like let's say the meter facing you, then you turn the meter over and turn it, put it the other way, it's actually gonna go a different direction. I mean, the, the meter will go a plus and a minus on this amperage. That could be real handy when you're doing something where you wanna see if the if the alternator is charging, you put it on, you want to see that the alternator is putting voltage into the battery. But 
you kind of would have to memorize and figure out which way to process it. I'll show you later where you could put this on and one way it'll read amperage. You turn it around the other way, it just reads zero. It, it won't read anything. And that's because you've got the rel button not working right. You've got to keep messing around with the rel button. Now I'm going to show you the welder here. Uh, this welder, we have 11.7 amps before we do anything. And so now if you watch this reading, this entire reading of amperage is high by 11 amps. Now watch what happens when I stop welding. Now the thing goes back to 13 amps. See, this meter retains stuff in there so that it's always going to have, you're always going to have a problem because you never know what, is it retained or is it reading? See, now here we're charging the battery. It says like 19, 20 amps. My little tiny meter there next to it is less. And now watch, it's 11.8. We turn the battery charge on, it jumps to 23. And that's because you have the rel in there. There's the rel again, I mean, the, the 12 amps. Now it measures the starter current, DC starter current, clamp on meter. It didn't have to break any connections to do that. But take a look at yeah, what so happens So let's now. put it on the positive right. lead facing this way. And it shows a minus 4.3. Put it on this way, facing that way. Three nine. Now, if you take the relative off, right? See, that'll double everything. Oh, and then it, it doesn't even work this way. It reads nothing this way. Domestic disconnect, chassis disconnect. That's oh, this is on. Okay. Oh, okay, it's on. All right, so let's turn this off. So now this this thing in the back is showing. It's showing half an amp, right? 0. 0.6. Now with the propane detector, it actually was the. It was actually showing 7 amps, which was right. Okay, so let's turn the thing off. It should... Okay, we just turned it off. Now it shows... Now it's showing 6.7 amps. Why? Okay, stop the tape. I need to discuss this. This is the problem with the meter. You, you're, let's say you're, go, you're going to do the motorhome, right? So you have a positive wire and a negative wire. You could put the clamp on meter on either the positive or negative. Now you could put it on facing either direction. The meter right now is the, the face is facing up on that negative wire back there. I could have put it around reversed, facing down. So you put it on there and you have nothing at all turned on and it and it's, might be reading zero, right? But then all of a sudden it, it, you turn something off and it could be reading 6 amps because there's 6 amps happens to be in that residual magnetic field. So when you had it on, like right now, this might be going in a certain direction, just like the battery charger. It may be zeroing out the meter because you may have 6 amps going the other way. If you turn the meter around and looked at it, it might read 12 amps, just like on the battery charger. It could double it. Because you never know which way you're putting the meter, and you never you, you press the rail button a bunch of times, but the rail button stays in. So now you have to undo the rail and then do the rail, and then it usually takes two or three times to do the rail to make it to go to zero. So you're always faced with a problem using this meter on this kind of situation. We don't seem to know. If I put this across here like this, this will show you what those lights were drawing. Okay, what was on was 7 amps. So those lights, or whatever is connected in the coach, is 7 amps. That thing now is showing absolutely zero. All right, so in technically speaking, 
Right now, this thing is connected up to the phone. But the problem is, you see, it reads 10. We don't know what that 10 is. We have no idea. So let's put some lights on. Ooh. Okay, so now it just changed it. And again, the meter never goes back to zero. Don't worry about don't worry about the meter going to zero. It's not going to go to zero. It'll never go to zero. But let's put these things in here, and it's I'm going to show you another little interesting feature here. This is a positive for the meter, right? We got this. We got the two of them right there. Okay. Now here's an interesting feature, right? I have a battery charger here to run this stuff. These things. Oh, I gotta put it on DC voltage here. Oh, I turned it on. All right, so we put it on DC voltage and we measure it. Let's see what it's gonna measure. Oh, I've got this thing hooked up right. Yeah. Hmm. I got too many things here. Hold on. Put that there. This there. Okay, so let's measure this battery charger. Something's wrong. But, you know, it's disconnected. All right, it's having trouble measuring that. It did it yesterday. Now I can connect this. Huh? What is the problem here? Let's try this one. 20 volts. Okay, 14. I'm, I'm doing something wrong. Something's gone wacky. It worked yesterday. Okay, that, so it's got 14 volts here. That's on that meter that measures 14 volts. There's something going odd about this thing. Why is it not measuring? Common volts. We don't have it on hold. Turn it off. A, a little glitch in the system here. Okay. I'm going to put this light on so you can see it. I, I, to be honest with you, I don't know what... It, it, this, this worked fine yesterday. I don't, I don't know what the problem is today with measuring... That we just measured these batteries. Well, it's gone wacky. The meter has gone wacky. Something's wrong. I feel like what am I doing? What am I doing wrong? No, because it should go to positive now. The thing should the thing should go positive, right? I mean, I'm reversing the plotter. You got this minus sign there.
15 volts out of a 9 volt battery? I don't think so. Something actually, in all honesty, something just broke on this. It was working yesterday, worked fine. So as you can see, you know, major failure. Uh, the thing's no good. And I, I was so frustrated with this meter. And first of all, I wanted to keep it. I really wanted to have a meter like that. I thought that's so nifty to be inside the motorhome, measuring how much current is being used as you play with stuff, solar panels and stuff. But <clears throat> it doesn't work right. The problem is that that uh, rail button thing, it's not a momentary little thing. Like I could understand if you go someplace and they, you know, like your calipers, you press the thing zeroed out and you measure it. But this is something where the button clicks on and it stays on and it says rail on the thing. And it doesn't go it doesn't go away. It's like what happens is I have a feeling like when I was in the motorhome, I turned on the microwave. That jacked up the amps to the thing. But then later on, when I was leaving the motor motorhome, I turned everything off and it was still reading eight amps. The eight amps never went away. So the problem is you don't know if that eight amps is really 8 amps, there's some kind of something on somewhere in the motorhome that's sucking 8 amps, or if it's just a, the thing has the residual magnetism in there. And what is not good with the rail button deal is the Bluetooth. See, the Bluetooth, you're standing, you're not at the meter. If you're at the meter, maybe you could, you want to take the meter off, you want to press the rail button, you want to put it back on and measure it. But what I found was that little red meter I had I felt so confident in that. Every time I measured something, that red meter gave me the answer. You hook it up, and I had some lights on, and it read 7 amps. And I knew it was 7 amps. I mean, I know absolutely that's guaranteed that's 7 amps. Whereas this meter, it's always a guess. It was always guessing. I spent a lot of time playing with it, always guessing about, is it really, is that really the amps, or is it, is it doubled on? Is it cut in half? Which way is it facing? And then the app doesn't work on my phone. Now, that might be phone-specific, but on my phone, I had to reboot the phone every single time I used the app. I mean, it, w it would not connect, and I discovered by accident that rebooting the phone made it connect. So that's a fail with the thing. The thing worked on the other stuff. I mean, it measured AC amps. It measured resistance. Uh, it did the hertz, the frequency. Uh, oh, and then it really irritated me. was <laughs> I didn't realize it. I knew it measured temperature, right? So I assumed it measured Fahrenheit. No, it doesn't measure Fahrenheit. It only measures Celsius. How can they how can they be this way? Why don't they put the other thing on there? There's the two temperature things, Fahrenheit and Celsius. So anyway, to me it was a fail, and especially in the end where it wouldn't even measure the battery voltage on that. I said, Great, that that's my reason I'm sending this thing back. I hope you appreciate the review.